Hey guys, Corey, Famous Media. Today, we're looking at the D7200. So the D7200 is the newest camera from Nikon. Now, this camera is very similar in almost every single way to the D7100. So what truly is the difference? The main difference is the video feature. You get 60 frames in 1080. However, you're only gonna get that while you're in 1.3 DX crop. The frames per second is still six. You're still getting 100 shots. Where the other difference is, is in your custom timer settings. You can now incremental increase your timer by a half a second. So it's no longer locked at 3, 5, 10, 20. You can do 0.5, 1. You can set the increments uh, to your timer on the photo a little bit differently. That's, that's a little different. Now, the algorithms and the autofocus are tweaked. Same mechanics as the 7100, but a little bit better and tweaked better. Now, the next difference comes in the low light. The native ISO, the D7100, was 12,800, whereas this will go up to natively 25,600. So the ISO range is better on the D7200. We're gonna test that also alongside the D7100 to see if it actually performs better in low light. So that test will be to come. But everything else about the D7200 is identical to the D7100, which was already a fantastic camera. So. We're gonna walk around, we're gonna test it out, but the basics are, it's still got the 3.2 inch screen, 24 megapixel, X speed four processing. The autofocusing system is 51 autofocus points, which is very similar to the D800, D810, if not the exact same. Uh, great, amazing autofocus quality. New York for you right there. But yeah, it's gonna autofocus great, just like you'd expect from a camera like this. I've got the battery grip on it, which is the exact same as the battery grip that you would use for the D7100. They both share the same grip. So let's take a walk around and let's see what this camera will do. But keep in mind that it's, it's very identical to the 7100, just tweaked in many ways. So here we are, let's shoot at f1.4. One thing to note, the ISO uh, goes all at 25,600, whereas on the D7100, it was expandable to that same range, but it wasn't native. This has got a much higher native ISO. So the D7200 has got tweaked algorithms for autofocusing, so it focuses much better, in my opinion, than the D7100, which already focused great. It was on par with the D800, whereas the D7200 is more on par with the D810. So I guess you could think of it like the D800 to the D810, that jump is like going from the D7100 to the D7200. The fact that you're getting 24 megapixels in a 1.5 crop, you can crop into 1.9, which is almost two times focal range uh, on any lens, and you're still gonna get 16 megapixels. So if you're shooting on a 70 to 200, you can essentially get 400 millimeters effective at uh, 16 megapixels. You're not gonna be able to get that in any other camera. So the reach is great if you're shooting into outer space or you're trying to get long shots. That wasn't a joke. I literally mean if you're really shooting into outer space. However, this camera does have the extra reach that you will need. And the autofocusing system is just great to begin with. I haven't had any missed shots. Nothing's been out of focus yet. Crossing my fingers though. I'm just pumping shots out and every single one comes in focus. It's a really great system to use. I've got the same battery grip on here that goes in the D7100. I took it off my D7100 and put it on the D7200. So it's the same grip. They share the exact same grip. The other thing to note too is that the 85 millimeter 1.4 from Nikon is actually one of the sharpest lenses you can get. Of course, besides the Otis, that's another animal in itself. On this, it's gonna out-resolve the D7200. It's gonna be in the clear high 20s, so this lens is out-resolving the camera itself, which has already got 
a lot of detail to it. It's got no optical low pass filter, just like the 7100. So if you're using the 85 1.4 like I am, the images are going to be outstandingly sharp and they're going to look great. I just love black and white. Black and white always looks good. Eighty-five millimeters also allows me to not get super, super close to anybody. It allows me to keep my distance a little bit. I almost feel like I can spy from super far away. Should get a seventy to two hundred. I'll be able to do even more spying. Switch back over to portrait colors. Shooting at 1.4, of course. Ah, oh, that was almost perfect. Almost. Do that again. Like I said in many of my videos, is you can take pictures of people on the streets and you'll usually find yourself in a position where everybody's kind of happy and joking around. And uh, it's usually not too much of a problem. You'll once in a while run into that one individual that will not like it. Uh, and then I advise to be courteous. But like I've talked about before many times, uh, they really can't do much about it. You know, it's a public space and everybody is able to take pictures in public. So it's just the way it is. It's looking stunning. This lens and this camera combo is great. You know, a lot of people have asked me why I don't use the kit lenses on these cameras. Now, the D7100, D7200, they do have options to come with kit lenses, as does the D5500, and a lot of the Nikons. The reason I don't is because I already have some of the good glass, and I want to use the good glass on the camera to show its true potential. Glass is more important than the body. Hence the reason why I use good glass when I do reviews because I want to give a demonstration of what the camera truly can do. I may take pictures with uh, lower end glass that may not look as good and then you may not like the camera or make it the camera's performing poorly when in fact it would be the glass's fault, not the camera. So I just think it's more appropriate to use better lenses. Plus better lenses focus better. When you're on the street you really need autofocus. And with the grip, it feels much better. I do recommend, if you're doing any serious shooting, to use the grip. The grip makes the camera feel a lot better, more comfortable in the hands, plus a lot better for vertical shooting as well. Taking a couple of shots at F8. Fantastic. Gonna stop it down to the sweet spot, which to me is F2.0. Let's track these cars because they are moving pretty quick. Spot on every time, too. Dying to bite. 
So let's switch over to video. You got to set the aperture, of course, before we go into live view. Because it won't allow us to adjust. Nikon, why is that? Why can't we have aperture control in live view? I could see if we couldn't have it in the D5500, but the top end semi professional crop sensor and the best crop sensor camera Nikon has should have it, and we don't have it. The year 2020 will eventually come, and they still will have not implemented aperture control in live view. It, it boggles my mind. Let me adjust my aperture because we can't control it in live view. Let me just switch my picture profile here. I'm gonna go over to flat profile, which is now in all of Nikon's cameras. really going to be testing my stabilization techniques in Final Cut Pro because this is very shaky, so I do apologize, but if I had a tripod, it would look great. And this is internal audio right here on the D7200. Flat profile looks great, but I'm gonna switch over to 2470 so I can get some better video shots. And we're gonna test out some 60p, which of course you have to go into 1.3 crop mode to get 60p. Why? I have no idea. Most cameras do crop in when you start over cranking anyway, but you think it could just do it natively like the D810 or the D4S, who knows? So here we are in over crank 60p for some slow motion, a lot less handshake, on the 24 to 70, it's wider, so it's much better. I just love the over cranking on a DSLR. 60p looks great when it's brought into a 24p timeline. Guy on a bike. Also, this is the Hoodman eye cup I have on my D7200. It just clips right down. The standard eye cup is okay, but you can't see through the viewfinder when you're taking photos, especially when it's a really bright, sunny day. So they're really stepping up their game in the video department. They got the flat profile, just like the D810, D4S, D5500. It's fantastic. And they've got all kinds of options for wind cut, vocal audio, or wide range. They're really starting to implement a lot more video features. The D7200 is great. If it had aperture control and live view, it would be just a killer camera. It, it already is a killer camera, but it would just be so much better. Hopefully, the D7300 and then the D7500, since we're skipping fours, will have that feature, but who knows? It'd be great to have it. Undercover cop car, perfect. <laughs> Gotta adjust my aperture because I can't do it in live view. Damn it, Nikon. Internal audio from the D7200. Let's see how much dynamic range I can truly get out of this camera here. Shooting at f11. Dynamic range is fantastic for a DSLR. Every bit as good as the D810. So if you don't need 36 megapixels and you're not really needing full frame, you want lots of tracking, this is the camera for you. It's not quite as fast as the D4S or as good in low light, but then again, neither is the price tag. The price tag isn't as high. So 
This is a great tracking sports camera, has all the video features you're gonna get in the D810 or the D4S. It really is a killer combo package right here. It's just with the exception of that, no aperture control and live view. So here we go, let's go over the features and the menus, a little bit of the D7200. First off, you got your autofocus and control button right here, just like every other Nikon camera. Your bracketing button's on the top, and of course your flash compensation, which if you press it, will pop up the flash when you're not in live view. Now, here we go in the back, same dial that's locked, single, continuous, low, high, quiet, near up, and timer. There are some advanced timer controls versus the D7100. Now at the top, you've got your manual aperture priority, uh, full auto and shutter priority, as well as full auto. You got your microphone, your USB slots, HDMI, headphone jack, and all your connectivity on the side. Of course, this is the battery grip right here. This tray will allow me to take out my battery and put my battery in, which I do not have a battery in the tray as I didn't need it today, but it is there and you can put one in there and in the camera as well if you have that grip. Now, this is the quick info button right here. It'll allow you to change your picture style, your wind noise, frequency response, how loud your volume is. Um, you've got your framing right here, 1080 24, 1080 30, 60. It's a pretty quick menu. It'll take you into the crop area, DX or 1.3 crop, which you can change automatically just by pressing the info button there. Now, your ISO is gonna be controlled by pressing the ISO and turning the rear dial. Your quality uh, will also be the same thing. You'll be able to change the quality of your picture, but these are also your punching into zoom. Now, when you're videoing something like I am right here, I'm gonna change the aperture right quick down to 2.8, go back in, so this button right here will allow you to zoom in. It's a one touch button, in or out, help you get your focusing just right. And as you can see, there's your volume indicator, just letting you know what your volume settings are at for your microphone. So here we go, the white balance, you can change tungsten, LED, flash, you can change the Kelvin values, so you can go to pre where you set your pre white balance, or you can go to auto. That's turning the rear dial. If you turn the front dial, you can save different features here for A.5, A1, 1.5, and so on for uh, B as well. You can change everything, fine tune it right the way you need to. You've got all your information right on the screen like every other Nikon camera. Here's your auto exposure lock and your autofocus lock, your OK button. You can also lock this. This is your video and your photo mode. You press the button to go in and out of live view. Your rear dial, your front dial right here, this turns the camera off, of course. Your exposure compensation, your record button, your spot metering, and this is where your dual SD card slots go right there. So here we go on to the fun. We got a low light test here, and as per usual, anything below 3200 ISO, pretty much waste of time. There's gonna be no noise in these images whatsoever. In fact, Anything below 6,400, you're gonna have to hire a private investigator and a forensic technician, and it's gonna be like an unsolved murder because they're gonna be stumped and come up with absolutely nothing. So you're gonna have to bust out that magnifying glass and go pixel peeping if you wanna find any noise below 6,400. By the time we move on to 12,800 is where the noise starts to creep into the mid-tones and the red color channel here just a little bit. Still a very usable image. 25,600, nope. Kind of looks like sandpaper and my eyes are starting to hurt. So let's compare it to the D7100 and see side by side how they look. Once again, below 3200 ISO, it's gonna be hard to tell the difference between the two cameras. Pay no attention to the missed focus I have on the D7200. When I was doing this test, I think I was drunk. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know how I missed it, but I just missed the focus. This is just for low light anyway. So moving along to ISO 3200 and pay attention to the bottom of the cookie jar as we make our way into ISO 6400. You'll see the D7200 has slightly less noise in the shadow details and in the darks, and it's doing quite a bit better. At ISO 12800, the D7200 continues the trend and is slightly cleaner. By the time we make it to ISO 25600, they both look like sandpaper and are making my eyes bleed. Just one's green, one's red. 300% crop ISO 6400 the D7200 has a finer noise pattern so it definitely looks cleaner at ISO 12800 it's the same thing the 7200 is definitely cleaner however at ISO 25600 they both look like sandpaper and they're both tapping out like sissy girls 
Okay, so here we go on to the fun low light video test. And just a warning, anything below ISO 3200, don't be looking around for any noise because you're gonna get yourself committed and go insane as you will find none. The camera performs so well that you're not gonna start to see any traces of noise until you get around 6400 ISO. It's still a very usable image at 6400 as you're gonna see right now, but there is a little bit of noise in the midtones and the red channel. By the time we move on to ISO 12800, you'll see that the noise is starting to get worse and this is the brink of usability. You're gonna need some noise reduction here. And by the time we get to 25600, it's starting to fall apart. The camera is tapping out, it's done. So here we go, low light test. Let's compare the cameras side by side and at ISO 400, 800, and believe it or not, even 1600, there's gonna be zero difference whatsoever between these cameras. It's not until we get past ISO 1600 and make our way over to ISO 3200, you're gonna see a slight difference between the cameras. Look at the bottom of the cookie jar and you'll see that it's slightly cleaner on the 7200. By the time we get to ISO 6400, it's much more noticeable that the 7200 is cleaner in the shadow details. At 12,800, it's very apparent the D7200 is a cleaner image overall in every way. And at 25,600, even I was shocked, it's better than photo mode. In video mode, the 7200 is noticeably cleaner. So next, let's check out the ISO chart sharpness test at 100% crop. And you can see everything looks pretty crispy from here, but let's crop in 300% and take a look. The D7200 looks fantastic. Overall, just a stunning image. But let's compare it to the D7100 at 100% crop. Side by side, they both look really good, although the D7200 does look slightly sharper. But let's go ahead and check it, and let's crop in 300%. You can see that overall, the D7200 is a much more crispy image. They have tweaked things and made things a lot better on the 7200. The Nikon D7200 may only be a few incremental updates over the 7100. However, they updated what counts the most, which means a lot. The D7200 gets the flat Nikon picture profile, which looks fantastic. You pair that with the fact that this is much sharper than the D7100 and noticeably crisper, and the fact that it's better in low light, all that combined means your overall usable dynamic range in the D7200 is definitely a step up from the 7100. And I'm gonna guess that the D7200 has got to be between 13 and 13 and a half stops of dynamic range easy. And I'm basing that off of the Sony A7S and the Panasonic GH4 tests that I've done. The D7200 is a monster when it comes to dynamic range as it's pretty much the same as the D810 and the D4S. Not to mention, we've got a tweaked algorithm so the autofocusing system is slightly better as well, which was already great to begin with. The D7200 is just a phenomenal camera, and Nikon has made a few small improvements to an already amazing package. The Nikon D7200 is not just an incremental update from the D7100. It's the best crop sensor camera on the market today. So guys, the D7200 is definitely a better camera than the D7100. Maybe small incremental updates, but they're the updates that count. They've tweaked the algorithms for the autofocusing, Native ISO is up from 12,800 to 25,600. Overall, much better camera than the D7100, which was already great in relative to the D7100. It's like the D810 to the D800. So it's a nice little jump. Overall, a nice performance boost. You can also adjust in increments of half a second for your self timer. And also, you get 60p in 1080, but you only get it in 1.3 crop mode. I don't know why they would do that, but it just is like that. It doesn't have the aperture control in live view. I wish Nikon would please fix this issue. Before I turn 50 years old and me and Johan have been retired from the review business, please, Nikon, please fix this aperture control in live view. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. We really do. But in any case, the D7200 is the best crop sensor camera from Nikon and probably the best crop sensor camera on the market. Now, I know I'm going to get a question that's going to ask me, is it better than the 70 Mark II? I can't really say offhand because I don't have them side by side. But what I can tell you for sure is this focuses much quicker and much more accurately than the 70 Mark II does. So I'm not trying to say that the 70 Mark II is not a great camera because it is. But in case anybody's wondering that or is going to ask that, it'll already be here answered that this is a better camera for photography for sure because it focuses better. It just really does. That I know for sure. But the D7200 is a great camera. If you're coming from a D7000, this is the one to get, unless you're on a really tight budget and you're trying to get a 
D7100 use, and that's the way to go. But for anybody who's shooting video and likes to overcrank and likes a flat profile, this is worth the upgrade from the 7100. It's about the same incremental update we saw going from the 53 to the 5500. But this is the best crop sensor camera from Nikon. There is no D400. And when we do get an update to the D300S, it's probably gonna be the D500 because Nikon is scared of the number four. Scared of the number four. But in any case, they're not gonna release that anytime soon because I would know about it. And this is the one to go to for sports. It's just great. It's a wonderful camera, six frames a second. Can do time lapse up to 9,999 photos, dual SD card slots. What more do you want? Raw in full, large, medium, or small format. And it does JPEG as well. Basically fine, medium, small. It does everything in camera, it's great. Overall, great camera. If you're looking to upgrade, this is the camera for you. Best crop sensor on the market. So guys, hopefully you found this review helpful. Uh, just to let you guys know, I am filming on the A7S on the Atomo Shogun in 4K. First video we've done on that. We're changing up instead of using the production and cinema camera to see how that does. But don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to purchase any of the gear I review to help support the channel, like the 24 to 70, 85 14, the Grip, or the D7200, or the Hoodman Eye Cup, I'm going to put the links down there in the bottom to help support the channel so we can keep the reviews coming. I can keep Johan working. Otherwise, I'm going to have to have Johan out here for free just doing reviews, and eventually he'll quit and there'll be no reviews left. So we're gonna get more reviews coming for you guys. We got the 5DSR coming, the Sony a7 II and the a7R. Keep a lookout for those. Whole bunch more coming. And as it warms up, we're gonna live here in Manhattan day and night doing review videos. This is gonna be a great year. I'm Corey of Famous Media. Happy shooting.